This week, let's hear from a health professional and academic who managed to ensure places of worship adhered to lockdown rules and therefore continued to serve those who wish to remain close to God. Hello, my name is Gert Trandawa. I'm a professor of diversity in public health and director of the Institute for Health Research at the University of Bedfordshire. It is an absolute honour for me to share my reflections as to how Sikhi has impacted upon my life and work. Faith is for doing good. Faith gives you strength. These words echoed throughout my childhood as my parents encouraged my two younger brothers and I to learn about Sikhism and about the importance of faith. I didn't appreciate at the time the impact these words would have upon my career as a health researcher. Growing up, I wasn't the most religious of people, but my parents instilled into me the three core values of Sikhi. Firstly, Nam Japo, remembering God's name, Girth Garo, working hard and earning an honest living, and finally, Vand Chakko, selfless service. These words have provided me with a compass and source of strength throughout my life and work. To begin with, I think about my work on organ donation which began 25 years ago. Our analysis of transplant waiting lists showed that black and minority ethnic patients were disproportionately overrepresented but less likely to be organ donors. Interestingly, when speaking to people about organ donation, the vast majority reported a lack of knowledge about the issue and considered it to be a taboo subject as it was related to considering one's own mortality. Importantly, many of the people I spoke to were keen to understand their faith's position regarding organ donation as they perceived their faith to be a potential barrier. I was genuinely intrigued by this finding as my upbringing in a Sikh family harked back to my parents' wise words, faith is for doing good things. An organ donation, which can save the lives of up to nine people, is fundamentally a good thing. So why the resistance to organ donation? Over the next few years, I was fortunate enough to be commissioned to carry out a series of studies in the UK and around the world to build a knowledge base regarding public engagement in organ donation. The issue of faith has surfaced in all of the studies and highlighted that the role of faith is complex. Faith is individual. Faith is subject to interpretation. Faith scriptures were written well before many modern medical developments were conceived, such as organ donation and transplantation. In parallel to this, my faith research work has helped to shape government policy. In 2007, I was privileged to be invited as a member of the government's organ donation task force. This work enabled a much needed dialogue with a range of faith and belief leaders. In 2013, NHS Blood and Transplant took the bold decision of commissioning a faith and organ donation action plan. I was humbled to be invited to lead this programme of work. We organised a faith and organ donation summit, which saw leaders from multiple religions come together and co-design the plan. The first time globally any such event like this had taken place. The action plan acknowledges that a one-size-fits-all approach will not work. Messages must be tailored to target audiences if they are to succeed in meaningful public engagement. This learning is just as relevant to other health issues, for example, when planning effective community engagement with COVID-19 public health measures. Alongside this, I've spent a large part of my career undertaking a programme of research concerning the prevention and management of long-term conditions, such as diabetes, kidney health and obesity. Our work shows that, generally speaking, white British patients tend to be better at making lifestyle changes when diagnosed with a long-term health condition. For many patients from a black or minority ethnic background, taking medications appears to be the easy option, whereas making diet and lifestyle changes appears to be more of a challenge. Many research participants tell me that they only eat unhealthy food or treats on special occasions. However, Coming from a Sikh family, I'm only too well aware that we have a number of special occasions. So it got me thinking about the role that our place of worship, the Godwala, could play in promoting health and well-being. This requires 
culturally competent messaging with people from the community designing the message and leading the message giving. This is because as humans we are more likely to change our behaviour if we see our peers behaving in the same way. Armed with all of this evidence, I try to translate this research into practice. So in my spare time, I work with a range of committed community champions to raise awareness of the importance of a healthy lifestyle and the need for blood, stem cell and organ donation. It is humbling to see the rapidly growing number of wonderful efforts to offer healthy lung and health and wellbeing sessions in Godwaras. The role of faith is universal and affects us in all parts of our life. For example, I've recently joined the Board of Forestry England and I'm supporting them to improve public use of forests so that we can all enjoy the mental health and physical health benefits of some of the world's most beautiful forests. It has been fantastic to see how many faith organisations, including those from the Sikh community, that are concerned with the impact of the environment and the sustainability of trees. More recently, with COVID-19, the issue of faith has become even more pertinent and personal to me. I was made aware from international colleagues in early March that COVID-19 was more likely to be transmitted in close settings and crowded areas. This got me thinking about not just how we protect the public, but also my loved ones. My dear mother attends a Godwara every Sunday, and I was keen for my mum to stay safe, but also wanted to ensure she was able to remain connected with her faith. So I had to broach the delicate subject of her potentially not attending the Godwara. After much debate, my mum agreed not to attend the Godwara, but she also asked me, now that I had ensured her safety, what was I going to do to help to protect the rest of the Sangha? So I contacted the local Godwara and asked if I could help them to think about implementing COVID-19 safety measures. The Godwara committee were incredibly welcoming and patiently discussed my ideas. And after a few hours on a March Friday evening, we worked out some public health safety measures that would enable the Sangha to visit the Godwara and we also planned how we could best distribute Lungar food in a safe way to those who needed it. Following on from this, I contacted the Sikh TV channel, who have always championed health and well-being issues. They responded magnificently and with great urgency, and arranged for a live two-hour TV debate show about how best to protect the Sangha from coronavirus. This approach to open dialogue was welcome, as it enabled Godwaras to consider how best to ensure their Sangat could remain connected with Sikhi using online platforms whilst considering reducing access to Godwaras. This discussion turned out to be most fortuitous as the government indeed proceeded to close places of worship in the following weeks. In recent months, it's been truly humbling to see the amazing efforts of the Sikh Sangat alongside so many other community initiatives from all faiths. They have ensured people in need regardless of their faith, have received food. We have seen health and care staff who have literally put their lives on the line to look after us all. We can't thank them enough. It is evident to me that we are seeing the best of community at this current time of adversity with a multitude of humanitarian efforts, many inspired from faith communities. I am reminded of the Sikh concept of Jardi Kala, which relates to the ability to rise to the challenges and difficult times. I try and start each day and end each day just reflecting upon Jardi Kala and remain forever grateful for the joys that I've shared with family, friends and colleagues. My PhD students will tell you that I'm constantly reminding them of the concept of Jardi Kala as they navigate the exciting but often lonely journey of doctoral studies. So let me finish by reflecting on the value of Vanda Chakko, selfless service. We are witnessing inspiring accounts of incredible charitable deeds to help those in greatest need, many of whom who are either directly or indirectly impacted by COVID-19. I hope that across the world, the public and governments can come together to forge a brighter future through mutual trust and understanding. It is a time for compassion, kindness and solidarity, as collectively, through ensuring the population's health, we can build a country's wealth. Vaiguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaiguru Ji Ki Fateh.